Now I'm going to teach you advanced gap theory. We're going to take a look at that same price swing. All of this is the, the initial run up. This is a Judas swing. Okay. In the first 30 minutes of trading. So at 930 opening bell, we see the price run higher. Stops dead in its tracks at the weekly gap high. The gap high that I told you about weeks ago. Having that level on your chart and then anticipating price reacting there. Swing low, it breaks lower. And that gives us this small little gap right there. This gap right there is simply a fair value gap. It's a common gap. They can be traded though with the context that I've already taught you. 2022 model, buy side, higher time frame level, takes buy side, does it go after the short term low? Yes, it does. Did it leave a gap? Yes, it did. Can it trade up into it? It does. Go short, stop above this candle's high right there. If you're really scared, and you don't want to take a larger risk, put your stop right above here and trade with left, less leverage. The market uh, breaks lower and we have this gap right here. This is a fair value gap in the form of a SIBI, just like this is, but this is a breakaway gap. What is it doing? It's breaking away from this important higher time frame high inside the model of the 2022 ICT mentorship model that I taught you, and it's moving aggressive. So we have one, two, two times there's a shift in market structure that's bearish. This is a breakaway gap. Breakaway gaps must, it must have some context as to why price should see, for instance, this is a bearish breakaway gap. It's breaking away from a level that we would already anticipate being some measure of a uh, short okay some context around this level we would expect to see some kind of respect of that level okay so it's a higher time frame weekly gap high we've already been there on monday repelled lower we created a short-term high prior to it here and then ran up to it there and then it took that low out there left the gap that in itself is the 2022 model then it breaks again returns back into it here what did it leave relative equal lows. So there's your fulcrum point from low to high. You may have missed the 2022 model entry here. No problem. Return back into this gap here. Breakaway gaps tend to leave a portion of the gap unfilled. From this candle's low to this candle's high, it retraces all the way up into this level. So between these highs, of these candles and that candle's low, there's a small portion that's left open. We would expect to see that. If this is going to be a gap, say you went short into it here and you're seeing it and watch it in here. Your stop, if you were shorting in here, would be above this candle's high. Not fearing any return back into this because we have had two shifts in market structure. This return in here, you're anticipating while entering the trade, you're expecting this portion to stay open. If it does, you want to see that happen anyway for your trade. But if it doesn't, and it completely fills it in, that's not a breakaway gap. Then it may need to come back up and tap this one more time. So if you were to get stopped out, you have to wait for it to hit this fair value gap and then break one more time, create another imbalance or fair value gap, and then use that to go short. So what I just taught you is how you navigate. If you're wrong and it doesn't become a breakaway gap, you wait for it to trade to the higher time frame fair value gap and then break lower again, create another fair value gap, and then treat that as a potential later breakaway gap. But the context is it's running up here to get traders thinking it's going higher. Bullish. Okay, from this low up to this high in here, this looks like a bull flag, I guarantee it to most retail traders. And when it went above that high here, that validated everyone thinking that it's a bull flag, then it broke lower. Now, if you didn't have that weekly gap high, you would never understand what I'm showing you here, but you've known that level for weeks. It broke down and then here is a breakaway gap. It's qualified as a breakaway gap because it leaves and goes lower to another new low and leaves that portion open. At that time, 
we get real confident that it never will come back up to this level here. So we can drop our stop rate to that level there and let it roll. Then we have these two candles here. These are one minute candles. So this is essentially two minutes of a fair value gap. So this is a standard typical ICT fair value gap in the form of a SIBI. And you can see them come back and trade back to them. They're like, a, again, a common gap. Common gaps can be retraded to multiple times and they reclaim them sometimes as support or resistance. And then we have this large gap here, these two down close candles. That's one big fair value gap in the form of a SIBI. If we were looking at a two minute chart, right now it's one minute. If you do this on your own charts, look at this area here on a two minute chart. That's one candle down. So it's only trading back up into consequent encroachment of the two minute range of these two specific one minute candles. So in easy language and layman's terms, from this candle's low and this candle's high, on a two minute chart, this is one down close candle. Midpoint of that is where it's trading here. That's consequent encroachment. This is a fair value gap in the form of a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, and it's a measuring gap. What's that mean? We can take this range and use it for projection. The market breaks lower, and then we have another fair value gap in the form of a SIBI. You can look at this on a two minute chart. This will be one down closed candle. And again, essentially working into consequent encroachment taking buy side here and then breaking lower to a lower low below that weekly gap low. Standard fair value gaps, which are common gaps, they can be reclaimed or traded back to as resistance or support. The market trades back up to it here. Look at the bodies of the candles here. That's telling you what the narrative. If you're reading my gap theory in price, if you see these signatures like this, see, I'm going to tell you all the time, the bodies tell you the story. The wicks do the damage. The wicks is what everybody else gets messed up with. Dojis and specific you know, types of candlestick formations, nonsense. It's all nonsense, okay? Reading price action naked with time and looking for these types of signatures here, the open and close of these two candles here are supporting the idea that this low of that inefficiency is being respected. And then price does what? It trades lower. Where does it trade to? Below the sell side here, but not some random level. If we take the high of that price swing and draw that Fibonacci all the way down to that candle's high right there. From high to low of the gap. Why this gap? Because this is the measuring gap. It's approximately half of a implied dealing range. Implied meaning we're looking for it to go lower, but we haven't seen price go there yet. We're not reacting, remember? We're predicting price. So the high here, draw that down to that candle's high right there. Right there, okay? What that does is gives you a projection to a standard deviation of negative one. And I showed you in the live stream yesterday. So if you want to watch the video prior to this one in the ICT Mentorship 2023 playlist, uh, go to the section where it shows the Fibonacci settings and you'll get the settings that I can share with you there. But the negative one standard deviation comes in at 4269.25. Okay. I screenshot this so that way I had my cursor right underneath there. So that way the data that you see up in the upper left-hand corner here, the low comes in exactly at 4269.25. Folks, that is the daily low to the tick right there. And it never went lower today. Even after our session, it didn't go lower. So this is my ICT swing projection theory. When I break the market down, see gaps are just like a PDRA matrix. They have an hierarchy. Okay. You have a breakaway gap. You have common gaps. Common gaps can be reclaimed. That means treated multiple times. 
Measuring gaps tend to leave a portion open, just like a breakaway gap. So if we're expecting it to go lower, it stands to reason that we expect it not to trade all the way up here. And if we're expecting it to be a measuring gap, guess what? We want to see it not go up there. And that confirms and qualifies it as a measuring gap. Then we can take the high, project it down to the low of the gap if we're bearish, and then get our standard deviations. But that standard deviation neg negative one has to be in agreement with moving below an old area of liquidity. So that's between these two things makes us have the precision. Okay. It's not simply you take a fib, put it over two different price swings, and then you're going to get the same math that I have. But understanding that gaps have an hierarchy. Okay. And this is how I qualify my gaps. Every time you watch me do a recorded trading episode where I'm going in, I'm trading live data and I'm pyramiding and adding and pyramiding and adding and I'm taking partials off and I'm looking for a specific level. And I'm using this logic here when I'm drawing out, when I say, I want to leave this, see this portion of the gaps they open. I want to see this portion of the gaps they open. Ideal if it leaves this portion open, unfilled. It's this theory I'm teaching you right here. Okay. Common gaps are a fair value gap that can be reclaimed, treated as support and resistance. We see that here, it comes back up and bangs it and trades lower. This gap here, projected through all this mess here. It's not supply and demand, folks. Sam Seiden has no idea what this is. Trade up into it here. The bodies of the candles respect that candles high right there. Perfect. Don't take my word for it. Look at the data. <laughs> and then it trades lower and makes the very low of the day here using my swing projection theory within the context of my advanced gap theory. So I hope you enjoyed tonight and hope you learned something else. Um, obviously, if this is your first time watching things with gaps or my theory on gaps and our swing projections, it may feel a little bit uh, complicated and you have a thousand new questions and that's wonderful. That means you're trying to learn and I'm here to teach you. Don't think that you can just watch this video and you understand it. I want you to go back and look at old price swings. Look at all these old price swings and start breaking down the gaps and use this hierarchy. I have more to teach you that's deeper in that hierarchy because there's other gaps that I'm going to teach you that I haven't even taught my charter members yet. But that context will be taught later on. I'm going to do it real time. For now, use this as a benchmark to go and look at your other old price swings and start measuring them out and journal them in your trading journal. Until I talk to you next time, be safe.